Autolite presents Suspense. In 1940, France was defeated. Half of the country was occupied by the German army, but the souls of Frenchmen were not occupied. They resisted in spite of the invaders, in spite of betrayal. That was uh, Suzanne before she was 17 years old. With your help, I'm sure we've cleaned out most of the resistance cells in this area. May I go now? Yes. But one question interests me, Monsieur Durand. Why? Why I, a Frenchman, have turned against other Frenchmen? Money? Thank you. I have money. Well then, perhaps you would like a medal. I could arrange something or other. I don't need honor. I have had many honors in my life. Then why? For France? I do it for my poor country. She lies wounded, trampled upon. I want her suffering to be over quickly, mercifully. Just sentimental, Durand. That's the privilege of an old man. These young firebrands. But they do. They think they do for the future. But France has no future. We are the future. Yes. You. May I go now? Certainly not. But I wish to go home. I'm tired. Here are your papers, Monsieur Zeran. I give you a choice. You'll be flown either to Germany or to neutral territory. You must leave immediately. But I wish to remain here. I've been mayor in St. Louis for 20 years. How long would you remain alive if you stayed on here? The underground would sneak in no agents, assassins. No, we wish to preserve men like you in our future. The question is, do I wish to preserve myself?
Take my advice. Which do you choose? Germany or neutral territory? I've been here only two weeks, and I agree with you thoroughly. <laughs> to be neutral when the whole world is in flames. Very strange. Yeah, look at them. Spanish, Germans, French, English, all walking along the same street. One grows used to it. There's a war going on here, even if it doesn't look like it. What do you mean? Who do you think all those French, English, and Germans are? Businessmen, world travelers, tourists. Spies and counter spies, agents looking for information. Hunters, hunters tracking down traitors, Sherry. Thanks. Senor, Senor. The other shoe, please. Yeah. Where do you come from, uh, Lisa? Uh, perhaps I should not ask her. Why not? Do you think I would have sat down here with you if I didn't know all about you? Uh, Order me another drink, will you, Sherry? Uh, uh, dos combinations. Ah, si, senor. I did in Poland what you did in France. How do you know about me? In this city, everything is known and even much more suspected. Are you, uh, are you haunted? by what you did in Poland? Of course not. Uh, lucky Lisa. You mustn't worry. We're both comrades in the sin. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid I'm dead already. No, you mustn't say that. The same embassy protects us both, huh? Oh, do you have enough money? I could lend you some. Thank you, I have plenty. Ah, and we are so, senor. We are. The embassy supplies well, don't you think? I get 1400 a month. This is my own money. I... I refuse to be paid for what I did. Funny that you should be so proud. You mean... people like us... don't deserve to have pride. Huh? You're right. You are funny. Not like the others. Oh, look, there's a friend of mine from Czechoslovakia. Olga! Another sinner like you and me. Olga! Wait! I'm finished, senor. Yeah. I'll get you your change. Uh, no, it's all for you. You're very kind, senor. Am I? Telephone for you, Signor Duran. Uh, the German Embassy. Hello. 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 What's this? There's no one here. You have been cut off, Monsieur Durand. Madame de Faux, did you think I was dead? Like my son Pierre, you had hoped I was dead. You seem to be surprised to see this old ghost. Not particularly. I've seen all, all of you in my mind. Much better this way, I assure you. The prison was blown up right after you had left, Monsieur Durand. I escaped. But Pierre is dead. And Suzanne. They're dead. Do you remember Pierre's brother, Monsieur Durand? Pierre's brother, Jean! Pierre's brother! Monsieur Durand, 
Second act of Death Drum, starring Herbert Burgoff and Eon Keith. You must be mad. I'm a civilian, not the warden of a jail. I can't keep him here in London indefinitely. You don't have to. The three French will be here to pick him up tomorrow. My orders were to capture Durand and fly him out of neutral territory. Well, why didn't they take you care of him out there? Huh? What are they afraid of? Retaliation. Besides, we have a thieves' agreement. No agent kills in neutral territory. We ran the risk of exposing our whole organization. This way, he simply disappeared into thin air. He won't even be missed. But I will, if I don't get there. I won't be any use to the Allies or to anyone. Goodbye, Metal. I'll see you down the car. Don't hmm? bother. Well, I hope you have a smooth flight back. If I were you, I would do away with Monsieur Durand, quietly and quickly. Do away? Oh, he deserves it. Here's the report on him. Do away? Look here, I'm not an executioner. No, you're a gentleman. I'm a civilian, thanks to this lady. Don't think that that will excuse you from doing your duty. Duty? Now listen to me, Lisa. I've given my entire fortune to this little organization we both belong to, but I'm not going to give my eternal soul to it. Your soul? You set up this particular little apparatus to help the free French, didn't you? Well, do this for them. They have more important things to do. I'll not murder for them or anybody else. I've never even set eyes on the fellow. You will. He's downstairs now. Harvey Johnson is guarding him. By the way, have you taken a look at Harvey Johnson? He has the look of a killer. If you haven't the nerve for it, try him. I understand we have a new visitor in the wine cellar, Johnson, hey? Yes. This was my son's sermonic. What can I do for you, monsieur? Do you know where you are? Well, how should I know? I was beaten senseless, I was gagged, blindfolded. When I came to, I was here. Mm. You're in England. Ah, uh, mm. uh, You will get up, please, and come with me. Are you an official? No, I'm a private citizen. I belong to a private organization that turns over traitors of every country to the proper authorities of those countries. I see. What will they do to me? Kill me? They'll give you a trial. And then they'll kill me. I don't know. You've been responsible for the deaths of 30 young men and women. I know. I know. I did my duty as I saw it then. And I must do mine. Come along, please. Oh, li listen, listen, please. I'm, I'm an old man. Do me a favor. One little favor. Huh? Well, what is it? You kill me. Now, here. Think. How can I face my countrymen? Huh? No, oh. no, no. Get up, please. One shot. One little shot. I, I beg of you. Don't, don't be afraid. Thousands of people are being killed every day. What does it matter? One death more. Please. No, no, no. Try. Try. No. <laughs> I am not a coward. Don't try. I'm guilty. I admit it. I caused the death of all, all these young people. It is your duty to kill me. My duty? Sir. Uh, May I see you a moment? Yes, what is it? 
custody for the telephone call, sir. The Free French have tried our prisoner in absentia, and they want him executed immediately. Well, let them do it. I couldn't do it. Could you? I'm 17, sir. Next year at this time, I shall be on the front lines. Oh, but you can't kill that way. Next year at this time, sir, I shall be killing. No, 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 that's different. It won't be like this. It's the human element, the human contact makes the difference. This is war, sir. I don't understand you, Johnson. You seem actually anxious to do it. Yes, I am. Are you sure it's out of pity, generosity? And to trust my, my metal, sir. That man is a traitor. Drive me out toward Reading, sir. I know a spot where it can be done. You'll need a gun. I have a gun, sir. Don't, don't let him know anything. I, I couldn't bear it if he knew. Shall we go, sir? Well, what is the, your decision? Uh, it's against you. Uh, we've decided to turn you over to your countrymen. Must you? We must. Come along, please. You'll... You'll have to help me up. Thank you. Would you mind? Telling me where we are going? To the outskirts of the city. And uh, the free French will be waiting for me there? Uh, they'll be there at midnight, yes. Come along, please. How much further is it? It's right over there, that hut. Uh, you go ahead, eh? Oh, 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 no, not from here, no. There's traffic back there on the road. They, they'll hear the shot. Then, then I'll wait till he gets to the hut. As he crosses over the threshold, he'll fall forward into the hut. Take my gun. I'll watch here. Go ahead. Yes. I... I had a son. Like you and you know. Is just your age. He was everything I lived for. What's that to me? Get up. He was a fine patriot like you. But he died in my arms. He was he was fighting the free French. Free French? He wouldn't know what to do with a traitor. Well, the Germans killed him. He was, he was in the underground, in one of the resistance cells, in, in the town where I was mayor. And all his comrades were still alive. But my son was dead. 
I wanted to see them dead too. So I gave the Germans their names. Foolish. Foolish old man. Do it. Do it, my son. Please. What's the matter? I can't do it, sir. I'm sorry. I can't do it. What's happened here? Pull yourself together, boy. This is no falling like a baby. His own son was killed by the yes. Germans. He's responsible for the deaths of 30 innocent people, you know. But I understand why he did it, sir. How out of breathing he did what he did. <laughs> Give me that gun. Johnson, we've got to report this to the authorities. Join us next week for Betrayal in Vienna, a story well calculated to keep you in suspense. This is the CBS Television Network.